Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nathan Titan Bane, and today I wanted to do a video on pet training. So, a lot of you want to start training a pet, and you don't know really where to start. Because when I started, I didn't really know what to do, and I just picked out any old pet that I thought was cool that I got from a boss. And, you know, I didn't really know what to expect, but I trained it. And, you know, it might get one or two decent talents, but overall, it was, you know, destined to fail. So, I wanted to make this video so you guys, you know, wouldn't have to go through all of that and could start out with a pretty decent pet. So, what you want to go, what you're going to want to do is find a pet that you would like to train. Now, it doesn't really matter what the pet is as long as that pet has some desirable talents in its move pool. And the way to find that out is you want to go on the Wizard 101 wiki and look up that pet and see if it has anything you would actually want to, on your wizard. Now, if it has something desirable, you're going to want to find some snacks to train it with. And the best place to get snacks besides using cash potatoes or, you know, farming for mega snacks is to go to the bazaar. And that's in Old Town if you don't know, but I think everyone knows. And so, once you're there, you're going to want to find pet snacks that you know your pet will like and what I mean by that is your pet is a certain type like you know ice fire storm all that and so most of the time if your pet isn't ice well it will usually like ice snacks and uh, a good rule of thumb when you're buying pet snacks is you want the highest rank you can find and there's lots of there's lots of stuff going around saying how uh, strength is more desirable when you get pet snacks and speed is better. Honestly, I try, you know, using pet snacks to give you tons of power and strength and, you know, agility and trying to get the best pets' talents to show. And, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. So, the only thing these actually do make a difference in is the percentage you get out of the talent so like let's say you get spell defy and you wanted to get you know let's let's just show an example you want spell defy or you want pain giver well pain giver is a damage stat and strength it affects damage so once you get that talent to show that's when you want to actually you know worry about what kind of pet snack you're feeding it because if you put it all in the intellect well it does nothing for your strength stat. So, the best way to go about it is to just feed it snacks until it gets a desirable talent. So, you're gonna want something like an avocado milkshake or killer tomato, something something like that, with a rank of seven or six. So, I'm going to be training this pet I have on me right now, Queen Ellie, and she's a balance. And I already have pet snacks for her, so I won't be buying any today. But that's where you come to get them. So. The pet training, I, well, not the training, but the game I like to do is Grumpy Gobblers because I kind of just enjoy shooting my pet out of a can. I don't know. It's just fun. And I always do the Stronghold for the agility and strength because I like the damage stats and I don't know. Whenever I get damage, I like to just try to get as much as I can. So, and the Stronghold isn't that hard of a map to do because if you... Well, the, the way this game works is you start out with a score of zero, but every 100,000, like 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, etc., you get uh, a plus that many points. So, like, at the end of the training, if you get 400,000, well, you'll get plus four, and then you get to feed your pet. That's how that works. So, a little something not many people know. And when you're playing this game, if you hit the tower with the exact school and the exact matching color block well you'll get some sort of like increase in power of your shot so like a storm shot on a storm block would result in a bigger area of effect like this and make it easier for you to knock everything down so you guys probably know how to play the game but that's just some stuff you may might not have known And I missed, okay. I don't know how I missed. 
I usually get it within like two to three shots, but this time I messed up bad. But in this video, I'm gonna feed my pet some mega snacks first, and then I'm gonna feed you, feed it the balance just to show you the difference. Because the mega snack will give you, you know, ranging from anywhere from 15 to 25 sometimes without uh, a membership bonus. So like here I have a Mystic Dragon Fruit, and it gives me 12 for intellect, 15 willpower, and 18 power. So I got 4 from doing the game, and I get 46 for just feeding it one snack. See, megas are important. But for those of us that don't have megas consistently like some of these people do, you will need to use the, rank, the tier 7 snacks and now I'm going to show you what how much experience you get out of those which is still a lot but nothing like 50 max of maybe like you know 12 which isn't bad but it'll just take you a lot more energy to train your pets and in my next video I'm going to show you how to get a good amount of megas pretty quickly and where to find these megas Alright, so we're almost done here. Gotta get that last tower back there. Oh, I was not expecting that. Okay. And I get 600... Oh, 600,000. 700,000. Alright, so... We're gonna feed it... Probably these... Honey don't melons, and it gives you seven intellect and three strength. So, see, you get 12 experience. Now, I'm gonna be back after I've trained this pet all the way up to teen, and I'll show you what it gets. All right, peace. I really thought it said Hitler. All right, so uh, we're back, and I got critical hitter, and <laughs> it gives you a three percent critical, but that will up when you train it some more. So, that's how pet training, you know. That's our pet training.